Hello. I just wanted to hop on here because there was a um, pretty interesting discussion going on about birth control. And I just really had it on my heart to share some thoughts. So, birth control. I've been there. I've done that for years. First thing that I want to share is doctors. Much like many things that the world has, like the news, media, it's all for profit. Doctors are a for profit. Back and, and before I get into birth control, let's talk about depression and anxiety and all of those things. Did you know that there are so many natural remedies? The first one being building a relationship with God. <laughs> I've been on Clonopin, Xanax, Wellbutrin, Prozac. Crashed my car during that time. Um, lost my job at that time. And it started with a primary care doctor giving me a prescription. Oh, you're depressed. Oh, you have anxiety. Here's a script. And we do recommend that you go and you get help outside of getting a script. Like, doctors are a for-profit business. So before I go any deeper into what God has to say about it is... To use the excuse, well, birth control helps me regulate my periods. I understand that. And if, you're, if your heart is pure in that and your intentions are pure in that, that you literally are using it for that and you are not having premarital sex, God knows your heart and he knows your intent and, and, and that's that. However, however... There are so, and this is where we mess up as, as like all of us, is do we really dig deeper on the natural remedy side? Like going back to depression, I took all of the medications that were prescribed to me and I abused the heck out of them. I don't take any medications at all anymore. God healed all of those things and it, and it was long-term building a relationship with him. There's such a difference between religion and relationship, yo, like... And I was a part of this group when I was taking those medications. So I love that all of you ladies are on here right now. Um, and I continue to encourage building community because community in God, like going to Bible studies and having mentors, like pastoral leadership pouring into me over a long period of time. God did not create our spirit to need certain things. Okay, but doctors are a for-profit business. And when you go to a doctor and imagine this, just same thing as if you go to a counselor, that's not a Christian counselor. They don't see that same remedy. My primary care doctor was like, oh, well, you know, God is going to, and that probably would have sound really crazy to me at the time, just with where I was with God. But birth, going back to birth control, I, um, yeah. And, and I do know of a lot of natural remedies for birth control, but birth control, a uh, godly father figure of mine found birth control when I was staying, um, I was 25 and a godly family like adopted me and brought me into their house. And I had just had my son and I immediately got on birth control after. He found it and with where he was at in his relationship with God was like, why do you even need that? Like, he was upset in a way, like, why do you need that? And I got defensive, and I was like, I don't know, because, you know, the doctor said that I should just immediately get back on this after I have the baby. And note that, the doctor suggested going back on birth control. And in his thought process, like, well, if you're not having sex before marriage, why do you need it? Okay, now rock with me if, if you're just hopping on here. Don't give me the, well, I need it for health reasons because watch the whole thing. <laughs> but I was having sex before marriage at that time. Okay, like God knows your intents and he knows your heart. And so you can tell people whatever you want to tell them. But if behind closed doors, you know that you're taking birth control because you might mess up. God did not create birth control. There is natural remedies for this stuff. And yes, I believe that, you know, if you're, if that is why you're using birth control and you are 
in your heart and in your intention, not using it for any sex. You're like, I haven't had sex in years. I'm not having, I'm, I am grounded in God foundationally. I know that I'm not, that sex is for the man that he has for me. Cause we can pick a man, but we got to wait and build that relationship with God. So he can give us who is intended for us. Cause let's keep in mind too. This is just a side note. Like God want, God wants us as women to be okay with the fact that we could never have a man in our life. And we got to be okay with that first and foremost. God wants us to get scared about that first. Cause that sucked to hear it. When a godly mentor of mine told me that, Katie, you got to be okay with the fact God could have nobody for you in this lifetime, which means you've got to be working on a relationship with God so that you can be prepared for the man that he has for you, which will only multiply his kingdom. So just me some of this Oh, absolutely not. And you could want to be married like um, Ben and Carissa... I use their names um, a lot. They're married and neither one of them can have kids. But they do really good work in God's name. Really good work in God's name. Um, but they can't have kids. So I'm not saying, I'm not like trying to relate it like that. But, you know, God wants us to do things in his best. And so he did not create that. But there are natural remedies and I know depression and anxiety is a different bag than birth control for regulating periods, but I would just say that the world made that an option. The world is very much a for-profit business, so to say, and money is the root to all evil. So when you think about birth control being the first option that is so easily given by doctors, keep in mind, y'all, like, there's natural remedies, just like when you have anxiety and depression, rather than what I did years back, which was mess myself up on all these medications that, you know, would fix the problem. <laughs> this is gonna maybe sound corny to some, it probably would have sound corny to the Katie two years ago, but like, God will fix that problem. God will work on those places in you. And so going back to birth control, I would just encourage to really just as much as you would take your time to go to a doctor and have that talk and get feedback from them on, on birth control to think about it. Let me ask you, like ha anybody that is on birth control, have you really taken just as much time to take a season, three months of natural remedies, eating ginger every day, taking a shot of apple cider vinegar on a daily basis, exercising on a daily basis, and that over time being a natural remedy and also benefiting your health really, really well, right? Boss up so that you don't have to go to that. And if you're a person that's like, yeah, Katie, I spent months trying every single thing in the book to regulate my period before going on birth control, then like, yeah, again, God knows your heart. God knows your intent. God knows your intent and you take birth control to regulate a period after you've tried natural things, then it just becomes a medication. That's just, that's my belief. That's just my belief. But again, I've also been a person that's like, oh, I'm, I'm just taking birth control to regulate my period and was slipping up and having premarital sex too. And the other really dope, awesome thing to keep in mind too is God loves me no more, no less than the me that was doing that. So let me see. I'd rather take birth control. Mm -hmm. So, and, and like to what you just said, like home remedies don't work. Again, I'm just curious too, behind closed doors, what did that look like in doing home remedies? I know, like I've said, especially when I was going through depression and anxiety, oh, well, I'm, I am trying to do all these things like without going to a medication and, but I really wasn't consistently and really, when I say consistently, I mean consistently, like on a daily basis for three months of a period of time, really putting things in your daily habits um, to have a solution there. And like if you did that and it didn't work, then again, 
then birth control becomes a solution there for regulating period. But I guess I'm just trying to encourage any woman that hasn't gone the route of really, um, you know, and, and like just the same ginger is, is not good for your, too much ginger is not good for your body either. Again, I just think that instead of going to excuses first on something that the world deems is okay, to really lean in to the latter, to lean in to building a relationship with God, what God has to say about that stuff, and to do things. And it's not just ginger. There's like a whole realm of other fruits, other things. Like if you want to message me, I can actually like educate you a little bit deeper on that and send you just a multitude. Like ginger is one of, I would say over 25 different things that you could be doing to get a more regular period. And so like that, and that's, that's just that. That's just me encouraging like, Hey, doctors are for profit. Not even talking about, not even talking about, um, you know, birth control, doctors are going to prescribe medications. That's what, that's what they will do. It's for profit and money is the root to all evil. So what does God say about birth control? He knows your heart. He knows your intent. If you are someone that is taking it because you've tried all of the natural remedies and no, God's not going to punish you. God created the, God created these rules, so to say, to help us so that we can be blessed. Look, I'm a I'm a mom of two kids with a tattooed ring on my finger of my ex-husband. And we were only married for four months. We were shacking up, living together, and having babies for six years. And he was arrested for second-degree rape and <laughs> second-degree assault. Like, my life was a lifetime movie. He was on over 80 different news stations. A house built on sand will not stand. Let me say it again. A house built on sand will not stand. So I'm just wanting to share that birth control. Yeah, if we're talking about it being used to regulate periods, I'm just leaning towards natural remedies and really leaning in to... Um, being consistent, adding things in your daily habit, like somebody saying, oh, like, well, I've tried everything to lose weight. Well, have you been working out on a daily basis or, you know, talking to somebody um, like a person, you know, looking to somebody that has good results in that area? Well, like not everybody is really going in hard on those things. But if we're going on the other spectrum of like birth control being created, um, even like my boyfriend and I are practicing not practicing, like we're doing the premarital sex thing. We used to be practicing and a part of the, we used to be practicing was I was taking birth control still because what if we mess up? It left that option open. And then there's the whole other side of plan B pills. Oh my gosh. And then, and then if we, even now, if we were to mess up, there's a freaking plan B pill out there. I mean, it, the world creates things for us to make it okay. And at the same time, you know, like birth control, I guess, can be a remedy that we choose, but I would just encourage to consider other things that maybe aren't so easy for you to do that do take a little bit more time. So premarital sex, it becomes easier when we know we're not going to get pregnant. It just, <laughs> it just does. Having children and not being able to provide for them isn't the best option either. No, it's not. And I had a lot of sex before marriage. Shoot, I was only married for four months before um, that ended very quickly. But we were together for six years and it was not God's best for me. At all. At all. At all. You can either pick a man or you can wait for God to give him to you. And I think too, like in that waiting period that we have, just building that relationship with God, yo, like saying, I'm going to be alone. I'm going to be okay with being alone. I'm going to be okay with the idea that God could have nobody for me. And when God gives me a man, he'll be equally yoked. He won't, God is not the king of confusion. 
God's not the king of confusion, so he's not going to give you somebody that confuses his word. Example is my boyfriend. We were, we both separately when we met each other, were building and growing in God separately and in pursuit of being leaders for God. And we were having sex. <laughs> we were having sex. And it took somebody that's way further along in our walk, a pastoral leader, to just encourage us and say, well, like, you know, is this really God's best? You know, you're missing out on God's blessings, especially when you want to lead. You got to look at how you're living behind closed doors. And guess what? My boyfriend was right on board with stepping up. And so I just also, I don't know why I just have gone off and sharing that, but it's like, we're talking about birth control. We're talking about sex. <laughs> We're talking about sex before marriage, pretty much. Because if we're taking birth control, and again, I know that we can sit here and say, oh, well, I needed to regulate my periods. Okay, I just went on a whole, I just went on a whole thing about that. So if, if there's a comment on here moving forward about that, I'll just say, wait on it and rewatch this. But now we're on to the next, premarital sex, sex before marriage, and birth control. If you're taking birth control, it's because you have you have that door available and you're okay with it is you're not really convicted in all the blessings that it has. And I've been there, done that for years, even with my boyfriend now that we both run and lead a young adults group at our church. And we are not having sex before marriage. We want to do it in God's best. We were not doing it in God's best in the beginning, but I was also taking birth control at that time too. So birth control was one of those worldly tools. And I do believe that birth control is something of the world, something that the devil made. And, you know, people can argue with me all day. Well, you know, women suffered in silence for a long time. Um, you know, maybe, maybe there are some women that natural, like if they really tried all the natural stuff, like went in hard, had had coaching in it even or whatever, like really went in hard if they were suffering that bad and couldn't find natural remedy. No, birth control did not exist. But neither did Clonopin at one point or Prozac. And like, but here they are. And here are people in the world saying that they need it without building a relationship with God to see if that worked first. You know, so like, so I hope that makes sense. Like, the last thing that I ever want to do is come off as judgmental because I'm not. I had an abortion when I was 18. I'm 27 now. I've had so much premarital sex. I'm saying premarital. I've had so much sex without being married in my life. Okay. I've done a lot of stuff in my life, but I know more now and I, and I know, I just know better. And that's all we can do as women is to just be chasing after God. And that's just another encouragement too, is if you mess up and you're like, and you're in a place of, you know, I'm taking birth control and it is, a, and it is a crutch in a way, you know, your heart. Okay. Like I don't have to tell you what you do behind closed doors. I don't, you already know what you're doing behind closed doors. Just like I, at one point in time with my boyfriend, we were wanting to lead a young adults group and we were still doing things that we shouldn't have been doing behind closed doors because it wasn't in God's best. So, but we could validate it to the world however we wanted to. And so you can validate taking birth control. That's fine. But I'm just saying like and encouraging to know that if you're really waiting and convicted in not having sex until you're married, there's no need for birth control. There isn't. There isn't. There just isn't. You know. <laughs> so then I think the biggest thing that I want to leave in this live video is, like, how can we get more convicted in God's best? Because not having sex with... Like, God gave me this man. God's not going to give you somebody that confuses you, God, or his word, because God doesn't contradict his words. You know, like, I, I've had a woman um, that I love so much, 
you know, in just a place that she was, Cher, well, like, so, you know, like, what if I meant to, to help him, though, in his walk? Well, like, maybe as a friend, but can you imagine God up there, and you're just eyes on him, and a man comes your way? Because, look, just as much as God is real, the devil's real, too, and he'll send people your way. <laughs> that really... The devil counterfeits it all. He'll counterfeit a guy that might sound real nice. And, and imagine this. I love the guitar, right? I play the guitar. A man sees me and is attracted to me. Oh, she likes guitar. I'm going to be into guitar. I'm, and sometimes a man will look at your love for God and look at it as a freaking hobby. Just like that. Oh, she has a love for God. Oh, okay. I'm, like, I'm going to rock with her on that. But you got to watch the relationship part. You got to watch your relationship. If you don't got a relationship with God, if you don't got a like religion versus relationship, if you don't got a relationship with God, then it's going to be really hard to discern when a man comes your way and doesn't have a relationship with God. Because then y'all can get real and deep together in sinning and and all this stuff because neither one of you got a relationship with God. So, so above all anything else is stay in the word and stay in community stay in community not just this community this i love this group but this is definitely a starting point like to go to a your church if you don't have a church go find one um go find pastoral leaders people that are older than you that are further than you and put your pride and ego to the side and ask them these questions and get ready to maybe hear some stuff that you don't want to hear <laughs> And then do better and raise your standards. And birth control is a tool that I do not believe most than not is a tool that God has intended for us to use so easily. Can I imagine God up there saying, oh, yeah, like, Katie, right after you had your son and that doctor said you should get right back on birth control? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. No, I just don't. And I, d I used to be in a place of smoking weed and drinking. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. And the Holy Spirit is in you, is on all 14 of us in here, and like 13 listening is in here. And the more we remove those things that like if you can imagine him being a rock in your body and then like rock and you over here there can be a lot of fog in between if that makes sense for me it was a bunch of weed smoke <laughs> like I could out smoke anybody um there was a bunch of smoke in between but I would like to really believe and have faith one of my spiritual gifts is is faith my top two spiritual gifts, if you don't know what your spiritual gifts, it's real cool. God has given us all spiritual gifts. And before finding a man, this is what God wants to tell you. Girl, my daughter, you need to build a relationship with me. I'm not going to give you any man. And when I do, he's not going to contradict my word. He's going to be in a place of wanting to grow with you in waiting before marriage, like just in pursuit. But learn me. Like, learn what I have to say about these things because that's over everything, over everything. But I, I would like to think that my spiritual gifting in faith and teaching and wisdom, and I do stay in my word on a regular basis. I'm, my Bible's always on my bed next to me, um, just praying to God, like, if I could just tell you the way that God has grown, the Holy Spirit has grown because I've started removing certain things from in between me and him. So I'm just encouraging you to know that, like, no, like, if you want to take birth control, God loves you no more, no less than he loves me. If you have sex tonight with a man that is not your husband, he loves you no more and no less than me, but you are going to block your freaking blessings. That's what I really want to get to you more than anything is like, I was going to regret the rest of my life with the, with the way I was controlling my life. And I do believe that birth control is yet another thing that the devil created that we can control our life. We can make the shot. I can choose whether I have a, a child or not. I can choose it. And God is like, yo, probably not like yo, <laughs> but God is like, 
I created these things because you're my little baby girl. I'm 27 with two kids, done the nastiest things in my past, got a ring tattoo on my finger, got a full back tattoo of Aphrodite, of a whole other god on my back. Talk about idolatry, right? But here's, oh, and that's a good example because guess what? I got Aphrodite, a full back tattoo of another god. And God loves me no more, no less. And I use that as a part of my testimony, much like when I used to take birth control. I use that as my testimony. I can't get rid of this tattoo on my back, but I can certainly do better. And anytime somebody, when I'm out on the beach and somebody's like, oh my gosh, I love your tattoo. It's a, it's a chance for me to share where I was at 18 versus where I was now, where I was now, where I am now. So again, if you're in a place where you've tried all the natural remedies that there is and you've really tried them, because we can say that, like, if you have a, if I have a mentor in my life that retired in their early 20s, and I have been in places, not about birth control, but with other things and said, well, I've tried everything. And they're like, what have you tried? Well, I tried this and this. Okay, and how long did you try? And, and when you actually have somebody, and this is where we go back to community, not just this, this online world, but getting in front of somebody with a face mask on, but getting in front of somebody that is further along in the world to mentor you and say, well, like, what have you really tried? Or let's do this together. Or, or let me hold you accountable. You know, it, it's not just birth control versus natural remedies. And are you really trying everything prior to going on a medication? And if you have to go on a medication, then I do believe God knows your heart. And if you pray about it as well, and you have faith that he's going to heal certain things, then he absolutely will. Because I have testimony after testimony, after testimony, after testimony, that God resurrects us, he redeems us, and he multiplies us to the fullest. So I just said a whole lot and, and I love all of you. And I just want to encourage that birth control is, is certainly a tool that I do see the devil in it and allowing us to make just yet another way that we can control our outcome. So I hope you ladies have a good night. And again, we can either choose a man or we can let God give him to us. And I do believe that if it's the man that God has for us, we will be presented with that man in our journey alone first in getting to know God one-to-one. -one. Because if you could like close your eyes and imagine God up there and you're a woman, a single woman, and you're in pursuit of God, which I know you are because you're in this group. So there is a seed there that you want to get to build a relationship with him. You want to get to know him. I am a hundred percent sure that God is not going to say, oh yeah, girl, girl, you really learning me here. I'm going to send you this man that's going to confuse you. That's going to make you want to have sex before marriage and make it super difficult for you. It just... It don't sound right. You know, he's going to want to give you a man that you can be convicted in what your standards are. Think about it this way. Do you think it's easy for somebody that's been a vegan for five years to be disrupted in their belief in not eating meat? Do you think like a man could come into a, a, a vegan? I've got a vegan woman in my young adults group. And that was kind of the example that I used for. I was like, you know, if a man was to come into your life and be like, yeah, that's, that's crazy hard. Like we should eat meat together. That it's going to be really easy for you to just do that. She was like, absolutely not. I would not start eating meat. And I'm like, yeah, that's how... That's how convicted God wants you to be in his word and how convicted that he wants you to be in where you're at. So when the devil sends you people, birth control isn't just something that is now a crutch for you to fall under. If anything, the fact that you're not on birth control and you have a high conviction level of, I'm not going to have sex until I'm with my husband. Oh, and also like what... <laughs> 
when we have sex before marriage, what what are we getting excited for anyway? Like, I d I went to the courthouse with with my ex husband as like a last. It just it became a task more than something to get excited for. We get excited to make a covenant relationship to be doing those to be doing those things with our husband, and so that we are children of God. Ladies, just because you're you're in your 20s does not mean that God doesn't see you like I see my little three-year-old. And the beautiful thing is no matter how far gone or like whatever we're, we're doing in our lives as adults, God is still there wanting to like wash us as we turn around. Like for me, I had a period where I was getting into the whole like for you page thing and being like promiscuous and making money off of it. Okay, like, in that, I am a child of God and I am innocent. I feel more innocent than I've ever felt even before I turned 18. Why? Because if you can imagine, I said this in one of my other videos, if you can imagine a ball of string that God's holding, you know, you can like pull it and you can pull the string out and, and eventually it'll end. Well, like God's yarn ball for you and him, that how you're attached it never ends. You can take that string and get so far away from him. And, and birth control can be one of those things, tools, and you controlling your life and your outcome and get so far away from him and do things that can make us feel so dirty. But as soon as you turn around and start finding, because guess what? You can start tugging back on the string and find your way back home to him. And while you're doing that, he will make you an innocent child. Like there's a song, I am a, ch I am a child of God. Um, it gives it a new, just a deeper meaning when you realize that even though we're adults in the world, you know, it's time to grow up. Like God wants us to remain these sweet, innocent little girls to him until he and, and to be in his word and to let him wrap his arms around us in his word and in his promises and and to like not be taking birth control for the well like but what if a mistake happens like love and respect the position that you're in love and respect the position that you're in with God you're a child of God you're an innocent little baby just like I wouldn't want my sweet girl my little three-year-old to be messing up, but I would still love her anyway for like, if she, you know, I find out she's running the streets. And when I turned 18, I moved to West Baltimore and was running the streets and my mom still love me. And that's how we can imagine our God, but in an even deeper way, in an even deeper way, because whereas like maybe our mom or a worldly mom and dad, like can't give us our innocence back. God can. <sighs> so Know your place and who you are to him and get excited to just be more convicted in that. So when a man comes your way, it'll become a lot easier to discern early on. Is this my husband or not? I don't believe that God intended us to date. I just don't. And I've seen some churches that really encourage, oh, you're interested in her. Well, it's time to court. Have you ever been courted, ladies? Do you know what it means to be courted? I had a woman once tell me, I don't want to be courted. Well, we're all broken, but to me that was a very brokenness comment. You know, just like, wow, I have empathy because, like, it just kind of shows where someone's at in that. But, like, God intends for a man to court you. And so when you're in God that are not married, hold on, I'm confused, that are not married should not be on birth control. You're saying they can be. So what I'm saying is that women like myself that are not married should not be on birth control. Absolutely. However, if we're going down the path of what well, I need it to regulate my period, then I would say, have you tried natural things, natural remedies? Have you really, and, and gone to somebody that's holistic and gotten the accountability and really done that, really taken that route before going on a medication? And if you say yes, and I am, and God knows your heart and God knows your intentions. And so if you're still in a place of saying, I did all of that and I still, 
I'm doing birth control because it regulates my period, then God knows your heart and he knows your intention. And if you know behind closed doors that you're convicted enough to not be having sex before marriage, then, you know, God sees your heart at all times. But I guess what I'm, who I'm trying to speak to now, because a lot of the beginning of this video was more on that, like holistic stuff versus for-profit doctors and what they push in our face. You know, because doctors definitely push medicine a lot first. Um, I, I haven't had one doctor tell me, well, you know, I think if you just worked on your relationship with God, that over time, a lot of these things would be healed forever. <laughs> like, never heard a doctor say that to me ever. Um, Christian counseling, yes. So just going into the need of building a relationship with God, you don't need birth control when God is the only person that your eyes, when Jesus is the only thing that you have your eyes focused on. You know, my ex-husband, this might be TMI, but my ex-husband, and I say ex-husband, we were married for four months. We were together for six years, living together unhappily. Having a, We had a baby. I was eight months pregnant with our second child, and he was arrested for second-degree rape and sexual assault on over 80 different news stations. My life became a lifetime movie. Even when I say it, it like I want to sell that story, my life story in that season to <laughs> Lifetime Movie Network because it was crazy. And we went to church every Sunday, but we were not we were not living and we did not have a relationship with God. I picked that man. You know, God gave us authority on this earth. God gave man, gave humans authority on this earth. So if we want to control what we're doing, it'll make God cry. I can imagine God crying heavy, heavy tears over all the blessings that we're blocking when we choose to hold on strong and control our outcomes and control it by saying like, oh yeah, I'm going to make this guy for me. Well, until a house built on sand will not stand, until we are okay with saying like, hey, like a man, just imagine like little fly, little fly men coming up to you like, hey, what's up? Like, what's your relationship with God? Oh, I want to get to know God. Hey, what, what? Because that's that was my first question to any man that came towards me in my season of like, I need not be with a man. <laughs> like... I need not be with a man because, God, I feel like all I've been doing is trying to control my life and and I've been in fear. And I just like, I'm going to just listen to what I feel is what you're saying. And that is to let it go and to be completely alone. And when you're in a place of being okay with being completely alone, and in God, reading your Bible every night before you go to sleep, going to your church, getting in a Bible group, getting in community, cutting out your worldly friends. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's, it sucks when you got to make those tough decisions. Because guess what? When I was in my word still and getting closer to God, I had two good friends that were living for the world and I was doing some dumb stuff. Yo, and like, it wasn't a secret that I loved God. I was, as much as you hear me talking, I sounded a lot similar to this at the time, but I was still in my actions doing other things and taking birth control while I was doing those other things. And so it wasn't until I had a change of heart to say, you know what? I got to cut, snip, snip, cut, cut. I didn't need birth control because I literally wasn't seeing no men. And I knew that in my heart. And so when you know that in your heart and you're making those choices actively, guess what? Then you don't need birth control. And I'm not in and I'm not at this point talking about like the the need for it for period regulation. No, I'm talking about why birth control was made for the most part is so that you won't get pregnant as you're living a worldly life. And it's tough. It is so tough. And the me two years ago living with with my ex and have just had a baby with him. And so, like he would have left me if I told him 
I don't want to have sex with you anymore until you put a ring on my finger. I actually try to do that and he kind of laughed like good luck with that. We've already been living together. We've been having sex like no. I picked that man and I dug deep with him a deep hole in the freaking ground a big grave. A house built on sand will not stand and God's not the king of confusion. He will not give you someone that contradicts his word if you know better. Now, if you're ignorant and you don't have a relationship with him, then you'll just go on living for the world and, and be in ignorance. And he loves that type of woman no more or no less than he loves me because I used to be that type of woman. And he loved me just the same. But the encouragement here is to get to know him because y'all, we can be missing out. I would have regretted my entire life, yo. My boyfriend and I are on the worship team. You know my ex-husband would walk out of the room when I played guitar and go watch football because that was more exciting. Like, you have gifts in you. And I wasn't even writing worship music at that time. I was writing little sad old songs about how, how pathetic my life was low-key, making it look good on Facebook. But you know when you're not being authentic. You know when you're living an unauthentic life. So God will give you someone. And I'll say my boyfriend again. We're on the worship team together. We're doing, we have a young adults group called In Pursuit. That's going to be a ministry and we want to duplicate in other churches. And um, we freaking have a miracle on Edison Street event where we want to, where our group wants to bless three families. And that idea came from my boyfriend. And my point is God will give you someone that multiplies your spiritual gifts. He's the one that asked me, why aren't you writing songs for God? My answer was, I'm not qualified. And he encouraged me to just know better. And that came from him, not my ex who was arrested for second degree rape while I was eight months pregnant with our second child and was on over 80 different news stations. God took me through that in his palm of his hand and redeemed and multiplied my life so I can sit here and over and over again, because I tell God over and over again, I will never stop talking about. And I know you're going to bless me continually. You're going to keep giving me things to talk about. But that was God saying, I want to use you to help other women that need to hear some real deep mess that you went in so that their hearts can be changed. God will give you a man that is not going to be confusing that is not going to contradict his word. And that's why we as women need to be efficient now in being alone. Okay, being alone and getting in his word so that we can be equipped to discern. Is this a man from God or is this a man from the devil? Because there's one thing that I know about the devil is he does not want us to get closer in knowing God. Because when we get to know God on a deeper level, he cannot. He cannot mess us up as much. Woo, he cannot. When you have people that are in pursuit of God with you, community, and it's hard for young adults. Did you know that the trajectory, the, the foggiest area for believers is 18 to 35? It's not really until you have, it's not really until you have kids that, a lot of young adults start wanting to go back to church. Why? Because in your heart, you know it's good and you see your little innocent kid and you know what's good and what's right and you want to put them in church. And that's a lot of the time when adults get back in church. And that's why churches generally try and focus a lot on the youth groups and stuff. Why? Because the kids go and if the kids go, then the parents might go to church. And the parents that are going to church are a lot of the time young adults. And so that's why through my lifetime movie of a situation a year and a half ago, I was given four days. That man that I picked and stayed, chose to stay with had panic attacks throughout six years of my life, which I made a song called Intuition. Intuition is another word for God. It's that voice that sits in your heart, 
you know, call in an intuition, call it the Holy Spirit, call it whatever. God is going to give you signs, going to give you feelings in your body, give you panic attacks. That's why I got hooked on Klonopin stuff. Why? Because I went to the doctor because I was having panic attacks and I wasn't being honest with the doctor at what was inside my body screaming, you are miserable. You are living an unauthentic life with a man that is not treating you good. That, you know, when you know that God will give you a man that loves you like Jesus loves the church, not the king of confusion. So I know this is initially about birth control, but I guess I just want to get deeper into the root of that, which is men and sex. Men and sex. Birth control, men and sex. And the cure for all of this is being well-equipped in your relationship with God. Like, I don't know how much y'all know about idolatry, and idols, but a man was my idol. Idols is like, what do you have in your center? Well, God should be in your center. The only way that God can, I mean, and God is in us. You accept that Jesus died, that Jesus was sent to die for our sins, then you have a connection and then it's it's only a growing seed and it's the solution in a way for sin that even in our brokenness the wages for sin is death and oh my gosh and that's like shocking but Jesus came and he allowed that relationship and and when he died he sent the holy spirit in us so what is the solution is really learn this is a good bible because when i say staying in the word to me that used to be intimidating and it was hard. This Bible that I'm about to show you is amazing. To me, it is the number one Bible for any young adult that is like, you know what? This girl is saying, this girl, this, this sexy woman of God and mom of two <laughs> is on to something here with needing to be in the word and needed to be in community. This Bible, the Chronological Life Application Study Bible, it's New Living Translation. Screenshot it. I'll give you a minute. Screenshot it. Boom, boom. With my weird fingers. <laughs> Screenshot it. Get this Bible. Start working. It just like working out as a muscle. So is being in your word and being in community. If you get, if, if you really choose to get in community with other people that are in pursuit of God, you will have the weirdest looking bunch of people you have ever seen in your life. And I say weird with love. I look at my young adults group of about 15 and all of us coming together with the one commonality seed, as different of, as all of us are, is that we're in pursuit of God. You will find yourself being a child again. You will find yourself hanging out with friends, not smoking, not drinking, not, not wearing sexy clothing out. And you'll find yourself having a bonfire in your backyard, duct taping uh, one of your friends. <laughs> like childish stuff because if we start learning God's word and know what he has to say about um oh yeah um absolutely and I do also agree with that comment about King's James version is that like a good example of um King's James version is when when God talks about Adam and Eve it's only said in the King James Version that she was a helpmate. And the word helpmate has such a um, deep meaning that you can only find in the King James Version. However, I will say in anyone that is just in a place too where you're just like, I need it to be relatable to where I'm at. It's hard for me to understand the King James Version. My boyfriend loves the King James Version. That's all he reads. 
And then I'm on the other spectrum where one of my spiritual gifts is teaching. And so I like to memorize New Living Translation because if I'm out in the world and I'm wanting to talk to someone that's not necessarily like where I'm at with God, that I can share something with them in scripture that may be more relatable to them. Because what is the overall thing that the result that I want with that person is that it'll be understood, it'll be received in their heart, you know, and not, not, um, be like misunderstood, I guess, or confusing. And so again, like this was given to me and it really changed my life in the sense of my relationship really started growing and understanding and, and outside of it being new living translation or King's James version, I'll just show you like a page. So you can kind of see why is not only like, so it kind of gives like a before description before you get into it, the theme. And it also goes in deeper what qualities do we want most in our leaders? God desires all who rule under him to be just and righteous. And it just really goes into detail. So even if it, this is hard to understand, or whether it's hard or not to understand, you might take some things from here. Um, an example is like in the Bible when it's talking about how Moses, um, like Moses led the, Israel, um, led the Hebrews out of Egypt right, where they were worshiping all of these um, idols and other gods and stuff. And Moses brought them out with his brother because Moses was, was like, I'm not a good public speaker, God. And God was like, okay, come bring your, come on, bring Aaron, your brother. And they led them out. This was over, I don't want to, I don't want to say an exact number, but it was definitely over 1.5 million. Imagine Moses and Aaron leading over 1.5 million Hebrews out of Egypt, right? Everybody was going to Moses. Everybody was going to Moses, y'all, like everybody. And it wasn't, it was actually Moses's father-in-law, Moses's wife's dad that encouraged him to appoint people in leadership like, yo, you can't do all of this. Go appoint other people that can take on some of these problems so you don't have to take on the brunt of everything and you can focus. This is stuff that I learned from the little place um, down here where it, where it explains deeper things. And so where I, and again, one of my spiritual, biggest spiritual gift I have is teaching. So in having a Bible that you can really, King James Version, yes, is really, I mean, that's, there are words that are in a King James Version that you will not hear in other versions. But being in a result of you wanting to build a relationship with God and just being in a place of it's, it's really confusing the word of God. This is a really good Bible to have with you. It really is. And it, and it increased and it, and it increased my ability to be able to relay back what, I, what I learned. And so overall, circling this all back to the, the, um, yeah, it's missing verses is, yeah. And actually, you know, I write songs, I play guitar and I write songs. Um, Psalm 112, the Psalm 112 promise. That's a really good book, by the way. If you ever want a good book recommendation, holler at your girl. Um, this, the Psalm 112 promise. I try to memorize scriptures and I pick what version is going to resonate most with me writing a song. They say, blessed are those that fear the Lord, that find great delight in his commands. My children can sing this. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses and their righteousness endures forever. Even in the darkness, light shines for the upright. For those who are gracious, compassionate, and kind. And that is, I believe, the NIV version 
of Psalm 112. But it's a way, whether you're doing King James Version or NIV or NLT, the Bible app, you can go and look through all of them at the same time. But the point is, is are you in the word and really learning what it means? That Psalm 112 is about how to be prosperous. Side note, putting the Bible on a, on a pause really quick. A mentor in my life in business and it's very true, you become the sum of the three things you surround yourself with. What you read, what you listen to, and who you surround yourself with. So if we're relating that truth that your fruit on the tree comes inevitably from what you read. Now, if you're not reading anything, that's scary, right? Because if, if one of the three things that I become, that I become the sum of is what I read, what I listen to, and who I surround myself with, we need to be pouring in we need to be pouring into a word as well as other other books and other really good things what we're listening to um secular music that's a newer word for me <laughs> worldly music and who we're surrounding ourselves with and i relate that in the most like biblical sense is that's so true so birth control Unless we've really tried every single, we've honestly in our hearts said, yeah, like I've tried all the rem, the at home holistic, holistic, um, all. I will pray for you, T. Um, and we've tried all the holistic things and, and birth control is, you know, gonna be the last solution, honestly, in my heart to regulate my period while I continue to have uh, no sex before marriage, then God knows your heart and God knows your intent. Okay. Outside of that, whenever I took birth control, it was not for that reason. It was not because I was not able to regulate my periods. It was not because of that. So I, that's more of, of what I wanted to hit on is to women that are taking birth control not for regulating their period, but just because the what ifs. My encouragement would be to get into God and his word and learning how deeply he loves you. I think that's one of the biggest things that we as women can cannot be in a lot of depth and growth. And I know I wasn't. And knowing how deeply we are loved by him. And so... I love you. And I just wanted to say a quick prayer before getting off here. <sighs> God, you were so great. And I thank you for what you did last night. Um, and who you showed that video to. God, I thank you. And I want you to do it again. And I'm asking you to do it again because God, like everything that you've taken me through and I know that you're you're bringing like though I walk through the valley I shall fear no danger for you are with me is that you're carrying so many women right now through like a dark valley but that there's always a promise on the other side and and for for the promise and that is to be redeemed and multiplied when we're coming through with you. And I thank you that that you have just continued to affirm and bless me in my journey so that I can Hopefully be a blessing. Prayerfully be a blessing to those women who need to get to know you on a deeper level, God, because I was one of those women who did not know you but needed to get to know you. And it was it was your community and your people that helped me get to know you. Because I did not grow up with those people. I did not see that in my own family. And God, I thank you in my adult life for giving me that. Even if it was at 26, it could have been when I was 66 or 76. And I'm thankful for that. God, I ask you to please put your hand on any woman that watches this or to guide any woman that needs to hear anything that I said. And I'm sure, God, that I messed up. And one of my worst fears is that I'm going to say something and you're up there and you're like, that is not what I said. And I love you for loving me even if I do mess up. But I thank you and I just pray that you continue to guide people to me that need to hear from you because all I want to do is do good works in your name. And I love you. 
and put your hand and protect these women in their hearts more than anything while they're getting to know you, while their brokenness and, and our brokenness and we mess up, that they'll just continue to know how much you love them anyway and you love them. Yeah, and you love them. And I love you. You mess up and I love you. That that's something that's continually just knocking on the door. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And I love you. And I love you. You're broken. I am too. It's okay. I hope you have a good night.